Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial, another fun tutorial. Um, in this week's tutorial, I am going to paint uh, something kind of slightly different, something that you might not think of painting, but it's actually beautiful. It's um, a kind of a sunset over the ocean and um, a hot air balloon kind of floating off into the distance. Uh, lovely sunsetting colours, lots of rich, vibrant colours. So I thought, yeah, you know, I kind of came across these in, these images on uh, Pixabay, um, and I thought, you know what, this would make a really, really fun tutorial. It's simple, yet very, very eye-catching, I would think. So, um, yeah, do join me. Let's have a bit of fun with this. I can't wait to paint this. Get some nice, rich, sunsetty colours on the canvas. Just lash them on let's have a bit of fun okay um grab your stuff don't go anywhere thank you so much for your support thank you for subscribing um uh, please do so if you haven't done so already you're missing lots of fun uh painting um so yeah let's crack on and have a bit of fun with this i'm going to do a voiceover with this one um be only because i'm kind of struggling to get the right sound in the studio here. It's just now very well insulated. So I'm going to record it, go inside, do a nice voiceover, um, and we'll see how that goes, okay? So join me for a bit of fun. Thank you so much. See you very, very soon. Okay, I have a canvas here is 20 by 16. Uh, I just primed it once, let it dry, and gave it a very light sand with some sandpaper. That's all, nice and smooth. Um, I don't have anything else on the canvas. So I just drew a very quick horizon line there. Now normally I would put masking tape across this, but I cannot find my masking tape anywhere. It's just gone. It's run away. Um, I don't know where it is. So I just use a pencil line. Um, I'll tell you my colours here. I have white, Naples yellow, a little phthalo blue, a little cobalt blue, some crimson, some red, cadmium red, some cadmium yellow, some uh, black and burnt umber. Uh, or burnt umber and black i'm not sure which is which i will see later but they are the colors and it's on screen as well for you um <clears throat> okay so a big brush i have a little drop of turpentine here as well with some linseed oil in it um this is just going to be very sort of loose but keeping it kind of close to the photograph if you know what i mean but still having a bit of fun now i'm thinking blues i use two blues um because that's a very vibrant rich kind of a blue there now the picture may be a little bit on the dull side and for that i apologize because what i had to do was um i had to decrease the quality of the video um to give me more space on my memory card okay that's all i had to do because it uses fierce um space i have to get a bigger memory card so i apologize for the quality being quite low um i will buy a proper um high capacity storage card okay i promise now some of that blue with a little white and let's just go across this um sky with that and i am kind of making it a little bit on the thin side um i just added some white in there okay because there's a bit of white it's just lightening as it comes down you see um so more white as it comes down and i want this very very light as it comes down because i'm going to start putting pink into it then and then uh, very soon some nice pinky color so let's see more white um it's almost white really at the very bottom third of the canvas there um i kind of picked this scene because i you know what i just thought something nice and colorful to cheer people up um with this COVID thing that's going on i thought just a nice easy to follow tutorial would be a nice change this week now some crimson into that color and it's starting to warm slightly and um you know <clears throat> the trick i, I suppose the, the difficulty with these tutorials is um you i never know how the quality is going to look until i finish the tutorial and watch it back so i could see in some parts here now where the camera is sort of auto focusing and auto uh, correcting here and there um that's something that i can't see as i'm painting i can't see the recording as i'm going so i'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that it's just going as it should and just recording so these are all little things that happen along the way it's very very difficult to to kind of correct these as i'm painting because this is kind of painting in real time if you know what i mean um 
you know, I I I don't stop for two days and then go back and start recording again. This is done from start to finish um, in one entire video, one sitting, if you like. So uh, that's why you you know you'll notice in some of my videos uh, the color may be bad or um, the lighting might not be great, and for that I apologize. Okay, but these are real time tutorials. Now I've taken plenty of pink now on Taylor Blue up in that corner because it's really really rich and dark you can see that really dark spot up there so i'm keeping this now on the warm side over on the right hand side it's going to be more um more kind of a plum kind of a color now i will put more red into it and i'm using a, a bit of cadmium red as well also just to kind of warm it that little bit and you can see me kind of flick a couple of little clouds across here and there i'm just being very very loose with this now you see very very loose dab 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 and the thing about clouds is clouds are never um uniform they're just kind of a little bit here and a little bit there so try to get past that try not to be too um restrictive with painting clouds and too perfect all of the time just kind of let your brush dance around on the canvas if you understand what i mean so nice and dark right up at the top there look at that lovely rich color phthalo blue my favorite color, phthalo blue. Um, and I'm putting a little hint of pink into this as well. Just to warm it slightly, okay? Just very, very, very slightly. And I'm putting more up on my palette. You can see I go through a lot of phthalo blue um, with paintings like this. But I just love using these rich colors. It's really fantastic. Now, a uh, little cadmium red this time. And I noticed, you know, when you're using Thalo Blue or French Ultramarine, for example, with Crimson, it gives you a very rich, vibrant kind of a colour. But I find using Cadmium Red every now and then, instead of Crimson, it just kind of, it tones down the colour very slightly for you. It's, it's a very nice, warm, kind of um, earthy sort of a colour. So a little Cadmium Red instead of Crimson is nice as well sometimes. So you can see now, look, I'm putting a very rich dark colour up there. Isn't that very very dark and i've even put a little bit of black into it as well because i'm building up layers so that's what i do um i use thin layers but i i build them up as i go and as i'm going and making it darker i'm not using any turpentine it's just paint okay paint on its own because that paint will soften into the already wet paint underneath you see And I'm leaving that bottom right-hand corner for all that lovely, warm, sunny, sunny, pinky, yellowy colour. Um, that's kind of what drew my eye to this photograph when I saw this. Um, because you have complete opposite colours, but they're complementary colours. So the yellows against the pinks and the blues are complementary colours in their, in their own right. So... They go perfectly together. That's why it's so eye-catching. And it's it's simple. Now, Naples yellow and a little uh, crimson, okay? And some white. And I'm putting that down. I always put a layer of um, a pinky kind of a colour between yellow and blue. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So I'm, putting, I'm blending this kind of a light pink. It's a warm pink. Uh, I'm blending this up into that kind of bluey colour. Just letting it sort of soften up here and there, you see? So it's a nice, smooth transition between the blue down to the pink and then down to the yellow, you see. Now, I'm not bringing the blue too far down into that pink either. Um, you know, just be very, very careful when doing something like this because you don't want green on your brush. Now, I'm taking some cadmium red this time with some yellow, you see, and that gives you a lovely orange colour. Now, just be very careful when using cadmium yellow because even the slightest hint of cadmium yellow in your mix could give you a kind of a greeny colour, a greeny mucky kind of a colour. So just be careful. Now, I'm just softening that up into that kind of plummy colour up on the right-hand side, you see? So everything then is sort of softening down different colours going from one to the other. Um, I, what you don't want is a sudden kind of a sudden band of pink, a sudden band of uh, blue and then yellow. You want everything to kind of 
go softly together, you see? I'm kind of adding hints of pink up into that um, dark blue just to make some kind of cloud formations so everything is kind of merging together nicely. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll take a sip of coffee if you don't mind. I normally have my cup of tea next to me, but I've I've tried a coffee today. It's a, a cappuccino, actually, no less. A lovely cappuccino. I do like a cappuccino from time to time. I know it's not great for the calories, but look, you know, life is short. Life is to be lived. Isn't that right? Now, I'm just adding some little bits of white in here and there. Look, just to give it, you know, just some little bits of cloud formation. And a little bit of light here and there is no harm either. Uh, just on some of those clouds, you see? So a little bit of light coming down, dancing around on the canvas, just a little bit. And I'm not kind of, I'm not looking at the reference photograph too much when I'm doing this. I'm pretty much using the, the reference photograph only for my colours, you see? Um, I can see there's a huge difference between the, the, the skies in these. There's a huge difference, but the colours are kind of similar and that's that's all that matters once you get the colors kind of similar um you can add your own clothes add your own features here and there it's completely up to yourself you see so i'm just kind of dancing around here and i'm trying to make this a nice composition that's all and i would soften all of this down with the blender brush and it's going to look wonderful <clears throat> it's going to look absolutely fantastic okay smaller brush small clean flat brush and look at the dirt on my tissue. Look, it's a good idea to turn your tissue, um, especially when using blues, because they make your tissue very dirty very quickly. Now, cadmium yellow, Naples yellow, some white. Lots of thick paint. Look, and put that in at the beginning, down at the very end on your horizon line. So just smooth that across. Work it up into your pink. That's it, you see? And I'm staying away from the blue. I'm not going up into that blue. So it's just into the pink I'm going. And it'll kind of mix together then and create different colours. Now look, a little good band of white right across the bottom there as well. That will prevent any green colours. And then smoothen this all the way across. Now again, I do apologise for the quality of this video. This is very substandard quality in my opinion it's very very poor quality um i will remember next time to perhaps do a trial run so maybe record a couple of minutes of video look up, look back at it see how it is um i have a habit of just pressing record and painting you know um and that's my downfall i suppose i just press record and start painting i don't kind of do a trial run to check the quality um you know i just put the quality to a certain uh, resolution on the camcorder and then I press record. Uh, you know, depending on what I'm painting and uh, depending on what space I have left on my card, on my memory card. But yes, I think, you know, I may need to upgrade to a 4K camera. Um, I don't know, just let me know what you think. If you have any, any hints or tips um, because this, this well you know this camcorder does really go up to a very high uh, video quality but it uses huge amounts of space so if I put this camcorder on the very highest setting now Savas who's a regular viewer he'd probably know all about this because he does film directing all that kind of stuff you know <clears throat> if I put this camcorder to its highest setting um, for a half hour tutorial it's going to use God, it, it, it could use 10 gigabytes of space just for a half hour of recording. That's crazy. So I need to find out a way of getting a high quality with a low storage capacity. So if you know anything about this type of stuff, just let me know because I'm clueless. I'm really useless at this kind of thing. Now you can see I just blended everything together there down at the bottom end first and then I cleaned the brush and went up into the top just to avoid uh, contaminating the colour up above. So keeping the blue separate to the yellow. One thing you don't want to do is to soften your blue and then immediately go down and soften your yellow and pink because you'll end up with blue all the way across it and it'll be ruined. Well, not ruined, but, you know, it's going to make it very, very hard to correct. So softening all these down together nicely as you go. And this brush I'm using, this blender brush, it's just a regular makeup brush. It's my wife's um, powder brush. 
she won't be too happy about it, but, you know, you have to do what you have to do. Isn't that right? No, I'm only joking. These are all leftover brushes that she's not using. So, um, as you can, as you can imagine, they buy a lot of um, powder brushes. So uh, there's plenty there to go around. Plenty and plenty of brushes. So I'm just giving that a very quick clean. And how I clean my my my, my blender brush is I don't dip my brush into turpentine. So I put a little bit of turp turpentine on a tissue. And I just rub the brush against it. So that takes off the paint without the brush getting full with turpentine. Because if you allow your blender brush to get full with turpentine, um, it just spoils the hair because it's so soft. It eats into the hair and it spoils the hair. So just do that. Rub it against some tissue, uh, which is which has some turpentine on it. Okay. So... Um, I think we're pretty much sorted with the sky. I think we're going to move on to the water. Now, the water is very, very simple. It's a case of just putting on those colours which are used for the sky. All right? Now, I'm going to start with mixing a very kind of a light, bluey, pinky kind of a colour. Yes? Some blue, some white, and some red. Now, I've used... Um, cobalt blue because it's a much softer lighter blue especially for these light blues like this um, if you use phthalo blue or Perusian blue for this it's going to be very very overpowering so just be careful I wouldn't use phthalo blue unless it's something that's really strong and vibrant okay I prefer to use cobalt um, Look, more crimson. We go through a lot of crimson as well. I love crimson. I use crimson in every, almost every single painting I do. I have crimson. It's just such a wonderful colour. Now, there are lots of different similar colours. Uh, magenta is another one. Um, so just try different colours. See how you go. See, see, you know, just experiment with different colours. I'm just softening this colour down now. It's just, you can see, it's very... Kind of a pinky, a nice pinky colour. And look, a little tiny band of white just across the horizon. And then you see, when you soften that together with your soft brush, it almost merges into the sky completely. And you have no horizon then. As you can see on the reference photograph, there is no horizon as such. Um, that's a wonderful effect, isn't it? And this would be very difficult to do with acrylics because acrylics will dry very quickly. Um, you really need to work very, very fast when using acrylics to get this sort of effect. Um, but that's why I love using oils. Now, I'm just making that a little stronger as it comes down. Okay. And just pop some blue in here and there. And add a little touch of crimson as well. So it's good to kind of change colors as you're going and um you know just don't have the same color all the way just add little hints of this a little hint of that you know add a little hint of red a little hint of blue and just the main thing is to have fun just remember this is all about having enjoyment it's not about um you know your life depends on getting this painting perfect. You know, it doesn't. It's just, we're here just to have a bit of fun, learn about painting. Um, sometimes it works out, sometimes it don't. But, you know, just relax and enjoy what you're doing. Because if you're not having fun and you're not enjoying it, then it's the wrong hobby, you know. Um, I, I speak to a lot of people who ask me for advice on painting and they get so stressed out they get really really very badly stressed out about a painting not working or it's not doing what they wanted to do um you know that's not what it's about if you feel yourself getting that stressed out really badly then just put the paint away put your brushes away put your canvas to one side and just forget about it for one or two days even um and just i would there are sometimes I wouldn't even finish a painting. I would just, if it's not working, 
I'll just put the canvas away or I'll paint over it completely with a coat of undercoat, primer and paint something else, you know. Um, it doesn't always work out. So keep that in mind. Just, you know, if it's annoying you, stressing you out, then just stop what you're doing and try something else. Or just go and have a coffee or a cup of tea or something. Now I'm adding up some nice rich pink in here, look. I've crimson with a hint of cadmium yellow. And I'm being very careful now going into that blue, you see, because I have cadmium yellow in this colour. Um, Naples yellow would be a, a little bit better. I have a little Naples yellow in there as well. In with that crimson, okay? And I'm very carefully softening this now into that blue. And remember, it's very important to clean your brush as you go. Just keep cleaning your brush um, every couple of minutes. It's very, very important to use a clean brush. Now, a little pink. There we go. You see, just softening everything together. Nice, soft, subtle tones. And I, I framed, I framed this painting actually. Um, <clears throat> I have it hanging in a restaurant. It looks absolutely magnificent. I, I can't imagine it's going to be hanging there for very long. I hope it doesn't. But um, I think it's one of these really eye-catching paintings on the wall, especially with the frame. Now I have another picture of a hot air balloon as well, with over a landscape, which I'm going to paint, and it's really striking as well. Now we're looking for a nice small flat tipped brush and all of my brushes are flats okay it's just that the really worn out ones are kind of sticking out um which are great for trees but i'm looking for a nice kind of a newish one and a couple of pointy ones as well because we're going to just start putting some ripples through this water some light ripples and some dark ripples now with a dry flat brush okay um let's take some phthalo blue a little bit of cobalt and that will give you a nice kind of a rich royal kind of a blue. Would you agree? Now, maybe a little hint of turpentine actually in this. Just to help the paint flow. That's all it is. So I'm just going to go along and put some darks in, you see. I'm just kind of wiggling the brush very spontaneously, just kind of here and there, all right? It's just to create a little hint of movement on that water. That's all. Now you can see on the reference photograph, there's just it's just a case of lots of lights and darks going left and right across the painting. That's all it is. The thing to bear in mind is, um, when you're coming across to the warmer side, you need to make the darker colour warmer. So adding more pink as you come across to the right hand side, making it more of a plum, you see. Now, let's keep going, just... I'm not going the whole way up with this either. I'm just going about half ways and then I kind of leave it soften off into the distance. Okay? Now I'll take another sup of coffee if you don't mind. I do like my cappuccinos. They're, I'm a sucker for cappuccinos. Um, you know, it's not great for the health, but look. Life is there to be enjoyed, isn't it? Now, I'm getting thinner and thinner as it goes up, you see? And it's going to just kind of soften our way off into the distance then. Just with the very tip of the brush. Now, I'm using a very soft, synthetic, flat brush. So it gives you a lovely little flat edge, you see? Leave that just disappear off into the distance. See, that'll do fine. Absolutely fine. Now, it's going to get slightly warmer, as I was saying. It's going to come across to the left-hand side and get quite warm. So let's go now. Lots of blue, lots of red. A nice plum kind of a colour. There we go. That's better, isn't it? And you see, I'm just letting the brush dance around on the canvas, here and there. And it's a good idea to just keep reloading your brush so that you have that fine point on the tip of your brush. 
There we go. Just keep reloading. And you see, I'm adding cadmium red now and crimson into this. Look at that. Lots of thick paint together. So in that warm section, then we have a dark, ready, ready kind of a color. Okay. And I think this is a fun tutorial to try for even a beginner. Um, I think you'll find this quite easy. It's um, it's one of those kind of tutorials which it looks complicated when you when you watch the thumbnail when you see the thumbnail of the video it looks very complicated but as you can see it is quite simple it's actually quite simple I think it has a lot to do with the consistency of the paint as well because I know if you put on too much paint it just becomes too much to handle um, if you put on very thick paint it just becomes very messy i prefer to use thin um, layers of paint i think you just have a lot more control of a thin layer rather than a lot of thick paint so a thin a couple of thin layers i think works much better um, i'd always keep i'd always keep lots of thick paint until the very very end if it's foliage um, or grass that kind of stuff are very rich highlights and shadows but other than that i'll use generally a kind of a thin layer as i'm going along they're going out quite nicely now isn't it just turning out quite nice now i picked up a pointy brush just to add little finer lines here and there okay that's all and it's just a regular pointy thin um kind of a sable brush or even synthetic it's just a regular cheap synthetic brush you can use i use sable brushes as well um like what you might find for watercolors they're fantastic for getting really fine branches and things like that but plenty of thinners as well okay not just paint on its own Now again, going for a very dark plum kind of a colour. And just going in over here and add plenty. Now plenty of red in this mix, okay? There we go, look at that. Just pop it in. And I'm almost not even looking at the reference photograph at this point. I'm just kind of going my own, taking my own route and just see where it takes me. All right? You can, of course, if you like, study that reference photograph in detail. Um, <clears throat> but I like to kind of encourage people to use their own initiative as well. And um, kind of add their own little bits as they go. And just, just you know, interpret what you can from the reference photograph. But don't be, don't be too fussy about getting it exactly the same. That's what I'll say. I have done, um, I have painted another sunset as well with some palm trees. You might have seen that on my Facebook page. I will have that uploaded um, next week or the week after, okay? Because I have, I have another one or two tutorials um, ready. I just need to do the voiceovers for them, that's all. So I will be doing a lovely reflection, a boat, a kind of a, a boathouse reflection next week and I'll have the sunset with the um, palm trees the week after that so lots to keep you busy and keep you keep you practicing and keep you painting okay lots to keep you going now I've just added some highlight color some of that bright yellowy color to the right hand side there just to ref re just to replicate the color up in the sky just to put a piece of that through the the ocean okay you can see it there now granted the colors and the reference photographs are much much richer than my colors here and um, i can see that but that's fine i don't mind i'm just mixing, mixing a very very rich orangey ready orange color now okay just to put through that um pink over there now you can see 
where I've put it over the blue, it's went to kind of a green. So I'm just popping some pink over that, okay? Just add a bit of red over it if it goes green. You must really be very careful using yellow and blue together. Just avoid any blue. If you see blue, just be very careful going into it. That's all. Now, it's only a hint. You only need a hint, okay? That's all you need. Now, even at that, it's not bad. So, Naples yellow with some cadmium yellow. And let's go up there and pull some of that across the horizon there, okay? Just to help kind of emerge that together a little bit more and to add more of the yellow in as well. I've taken some crimson with some white and you see I'm just pushing that through that blue up there just to kind of neutralize any um, hint of green which there might be on the canvas. So between the yellow and the blue I always put that little tiny hint of pink, that's all, a little hint of it. So I'm softening this across now with my soft blender brush, just very lightly. Just, just to take the edges of those brush strokes off, that's all. And I'm going to take some. I want to put some nice bright highlight on that water now, okay? So some phthalo blue and some white. And just here and there, look, just a hint of that very bright whitey blue, I think, will... Um, just kind of bring the water to life. And I'm just kind of putting a little dab of it here and there. You see? It's really just to catch the light, that's all. Just to help with the movement of the water, really. That's all it is. Now, I wouldn't overdo this, okay? I'm just going to put a hint of it in. I'm not going to go crazy with this. I may even add some... Thalo blue just on its own sometimes is quite nice as well. It, um, it really drop, just kind of catches the eye, that thalo blue. It's a wonderful colour. Now you can use French ultramarine for this if you want as well, but it's going to look very rich. Um, French ultramarine is a very, very rich colour. And you have to be careful using it. It's just a very, very vibrant colour. Now a touch of light pink as well. Just mix it through there, here and there, where you put that light blue as well. And we're going to be moving on to the hot air balloon pretty soon, I, say, I, I think. Pretty soon. I'm excited for the hot air balloon um, part of this tutorial. It was a lot of fun, actually. It really, really, really was. Now, I'm softening again. I'm just not happy with that cloud up there. I just want to soften that down a little bit more, okay? Just that little tiny bit. Because I just want to create more kind of distance in the painting with that sky. Just a little hint more of distance because I think the cloud was just a little bit too sort of prominent. Now, here we go. Moving on to the balloon. And this will take a bit of time. Probably, we may, we may spend 10 or 15 minutes doing this, okay? Maybe more. But I'm just going to pick a point on the canvas. Now, I did draw one initially, it was too small, but I'll do it bigger. So you'll see me painting it bigger, okay? Um, I'm picking the top point, and I'm just coming around in a nice, broad circle and kind of straightening down into a point. Now, that is probably a bit small, but I'll draw it in anyway, and we'll have a look and see what you think. Do you think it needs a bit more um, dominance in the sky? I don't know. 
but I don't want it to be very, very small on the painting either. I want people to kind of see it, um, and I want it to kind of stand out. So, mm, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to make it bigger, I think. Yeah. Just give it a little bit more emphasis in the painting. So just copy, just copy those lines a little bit wider, okay? Now, my drawing skills are not the best, I'll be honest. So, um, you know, as you can see, I'm not very good at drawing. I never was very good at drawing in as such. Um, I was good with a paintbrush, but not very good with drawing with pencils and that kind of thing. I think that will do. I think that will do fine. Um, you don't need to copy that hot air balloon either exactly, okay? You can put your own type of balloon in. You can make it different colours. I like this one because I think that black rim across the centre, it just catches your eye. Um, it just makes those brighter colours stand out a bit more. Now, I do spend a bit of time doing this and changing it because... I haven't painted a hot air balloon before, um, so I do spend a bit of time kind of changing this once or twice as I'm going along. So, you know, bear with me. I don't want to be skipping through the entire painting of the hot air balloon. Um, I'd like you to see the process of me kind of changing it as well. Now, there are a number of ways of you, that you can do this. I kind of, I think I chose the wrong way. I tried to paint in the colours on their own and paint the black around the colours. But what I maybe should have done, looking back at the video now, was I should have, I could have painted the entire balloon just black, right? And then let that dry for a couple of hours or even till the next day or something. And then put in your colours. That would have made life a little easier, I think. Um, but... You know, you learn something new every day, don't you? I probably just took the wrong approach, I think. I think my initial my initial idea was to paint all those stripes of colours around in that circle. Um, but I kind of realised then, as I was going, that maybe this is not the right way to do it. And that's painting for you. That's that's painting. And that's what I love about painting is because you learn as you go. You learn new ways of doing things. So I can see the perspective is completely wrong. And I think I just made a complete mess of it earlier on. Um, but I correct it then later on. All right. Now you can see I've kind of just jumped ahead a couple of minutes. Um, I've just kind of painted the black in around all of those strips of colours which I just had, okay? Which I just put on. So I just put in all the strips of colours and then I put the black around some of those forming the curve. So moving on now down to the very end of the balloon here. I'm going to just add some colour just to the very end of that balloon. Um, just where the very base of the balloon is. You can see the kind of a glow where the flame is going up into the balloon. I'm just going to paint that section next, okay? I'm just adding lots of yellow, kind of yellow with a bit of red. You can see it's just lots of yellow and red mixed together. So just put a little triangle. That's all it is, a little upside down triangle. So just paint that in there nice and loosely. And what I'll do then is kind of soften some of this orange color up into the balloon into the colours of the balloon so that you have that type of a glow then coming up into the balloon now coming down to a nice point So you can see I just put a nice hint of bright yellow. I use cadmium yellow with white and just put a hint of that here and there up in the balloon, you see? Just to create that little light going up into the balloon. That's all. 
Now the hair on the brush, I, took, I just took the hair off the brush there. Um, and for the basket, you know, the basket is just a simple little rectangle. That's all. A simple square rectangle with some dark colour. Some burnt umber, I think it was I used. Some nice burnt umber. Just create a nice little dark rectangle. Just to, It's just a suggestion. That's all it is. And you can just suggest, even suggest some little outlines of people and I've just added a little highlight on that um, some little ropes that kind of thing you don't have to do that if you don't want um, but you could just put a little hint of a couple of dots for people's heads that kind of thing but yes just simplify it that's all just keep it nice and simple you see a couple of little dots On the whole, I'm pretty happy with the painting. Now you can see I've put some lines down through the dark patch, dark spot as well on the balloon itself. I just kind of created the, the division between those sections of the balloon with some, um, I just ran my brush down from one to the other, sort of joining them up, if you know what I mean. But yes, I'm happy enough. I'm fairly happy with this. Now some birds off in the distance. You see those little birds? Let's put a tiny hint of a few birds. Way off there, just flying next to the balloon. Just kind of at different angles. You see what I mean? A little flock of birds following the balloon. And I'll try not to kind of overdo this either. Just going to kind of keep it simple. Nice flock of birds. I think that will do. I think that's enough, isn't it? It's almost time for the reflection. So I'm just going to take... Um, I'll start with some dark brown, I think, for that basket colour. I will... I'm just zooming in here now on my phone so I can see the reflection a bit closer. So we have some dark brown. I'll start with that, I think, just for the basket. And I'll work my way out from that then. I think that's probably the easiest way to do it, isn't it? So I'll just put a hint of dark brown. And the easy thing about this is that the water is moving, so the lines are not going to be perfect all the way. It's just a case of putting in some of those colours that you'll see and wiggling those colours from left to right, you see? In between the waves. So I've started with that red going up the middle. So a little bit of red going up the middle there. Then I put a little bit of that yellowy colour. Just a hint, that's all. Little hint. Just let it kind of dance around, hit and miss the canvas. I do the same on the opposite side. A bit of yellow there. Okay, just, uh, you know, a little bit of black in between, just to show the black section going across the middle. Now you can see on the, ref on the reference as well, there's that kind of a black outline, isn't there? Which kind of goes around the balloon. So I'll put a little bit of dark as well in there. Now you can take your time with this when you want, just take your time and do it nice and slowly, put plenty of paint on. Um, I'm just kind of doing it quickly because I can see there's my my power on the battery is getting very very low on the camcorder so I'm having to kind of just uh, hurry up just a little bit but you can take your time doing this okay it's just a little hint little wiggle here and there you don't have to go crazy with this But just have a bit of fun anyway. A bit of yellow just for that base, just there. So you can see I'm just kind of uh, strengthening the colours a little, just a little bit.
but do have a bit of fun when painting this and um, do let me know what you think and do subscribe if you haven't done so uh, you're missing lots of fantastic paintings I think these are wonderful especially for the beginner and the amateur um, painter if you're looking to get started I think these tutorials are what you'll need because uh, I like to kind of keep it simple um, but explain as well as I'm going along which you don't see in a lot of tutorials there are many out there but a lot of them just have kind of time lapse going through them or they just have music in the background or something and it's very difficult to learn from those because there's no explanations I like to kind of explain what I'm doing and explain in real terms and in ways that you can understand where I'm kind of thinking and where I'm coming from so do subscribe Follow me on Facebook if you like, Stephen Conway Art on Facebook. Um, I do also have a Patreon page if you're interested in supporting me. It's um, Stephen, it's what is it, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Conway Painting. And uh, there are more tutorials there as well, uh, lots of in depth tutorials. So um, go and check it out, and I, uh, I appreciate the support, I really do. It helps with all these materials, it helps with everything. So thank you so much. So, just softening this out. Very slightly. Um, we're almost there, folks, I think. I think we're almost there. We're pretty much on the home run, aren't we? And there we go. Let me just zoom in and show you. You see, just keep it simple. Nice birds float, flying away off into the distance with the balloon. And it's quite a romantic painting, isn't it? I'm, um, I'm very happy with the way it's turned out. Very, very happy. I'll frame this and I will uh, hang it up on a nice wall in the restaurant. Um, or you can email me as well for brushes if you like. stephenconway12 at gmail.com um, I can send you nice stubby brushes, okay? The ones I use. So uh, it's been really fun. It really, really has been fun. Thank you uh, so much for watching. And um, I'll kind of continue on here now, just adding little hints of colour to this. Um, just kind of brightening some of the colours up, you know? Just kind of tip away at your own pace. A nice romantic hot air balloon going off into the sunset. Thank you so much, folks. It's um, it's been a real, real, real pleasure. And um, do let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, please do ask. Okay, don't be shy. Just email me anything you have. Just I would be more than happy to. Um, to help you out in any way that I can, all right? Um, until next time, I will see you very, very soon. I'll be back next week with that um, boat reflection. Thank you so much. Um, I'll see you soon. God bless and happy painting.